Or is it okay like this? Check, check, check. Hello, hello, hello. Or is it okay like this? Check, check, check. Hello, hello, hello. Dun 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 dun. Contrary to the common Iranian filmmakers who pick out in their movies the Iranian government and jurisdiction, as well as social problems as central themes, and so gaining recognition in European and American film festivals, Andy Digger, the Swiss-Iranian screenwriter, photographer and filmmaker, who spent more than half of his life in Europe and knowing intensively the negative and positive sides of both social systems, is examining the European society carefully and with keen eye. My name is Andy Digger and I am a Swiss-Iranian screenwriter, photographer and filmmaker. The title of my film today is Think Twice and it can be assumed that I will make myself unpopular with some. However, it is in no way my intention to offend any group, person or creed or to hurt their feelings and beliefs. This film is based on research, facts, and already published documents, most of which were unknown to you until now. Your outlook on life and perspective will change fundamentally afterwards. Basically, many adherents of heroes, human figure or country, don't have detailed knowledge about their heroes, their true life, and their past. People are always looking for myths and idols. They do not want to admit that their idols are not what they represent, and what people want to see. Today you will experience what connections, or in other words, what similarities and parallels exist between the slave trade, neutral Switzerland, and the creation of some Swiss banks, Che Guevara with Irish roots, and multimillionaire Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat, or Adolf Hitler and the Iranian government leader Ayatollah Khomeini with Indian roots, and Ayatollah Khamenei with Iraqi roots, as well as Napoleon with Turkish President Erdogan. I did not choose these topics by chance, but I was always involuntarily, directly or indirectly confronted with these topics and sometimes had extremely bitter experiences.
Yasser Arafat, president and leader of the Palestinian Authority. He was the third chairman of the Palestinian Liberation Organization from 4th February 1969 and the first president of the Palestinian Authority from 12th February 1996 until his death on 11th of November 2004. For decades, Arafat's efforts were to destroy Israel. With his famous Palestinian headscarf, he pretended to be a fighter for the poor, hungry, and homeless Palestinians. He traveled all over the world to raise money for the Palestinians and to keep drawing attention to the situation of poor Palestinians. In my life, I experienced Arafat coming to Ayatollah Khomeini for a state visit in Iran. His broad laugh and his visit to Iran to raise money at a time when people in Iran were in a bad state was unpleasant for me as a child. I was told he was raising money for the poor Palestinians. Only years later in Europe did I learn through the media and the internet that Yasser Arafat was not a Palestinian but an Egyptian, as he was born on 24th of August 1929 in Cairo, Egypt. I also learned that he himself was neither poor nor used the collected money for the poor Palestinians, but he ranked sixth in the monarchs and rulers category on the list of the richest people announced annually by the U.S. business magazine Forbes. According to two sources, his assets are estimated at either $300 million or $700 million to which the Israeli Secret Service refers. In his accounts, and being the sixth richest man in the world at that time with a fortune of over $900 million. In Yasser Arafat's lifetime, the Treasury gave the Palestinian Authority $74 million for the expenses of the presidential seat, that is, 8% of the Palestinian budget. According to the account of Fayyad's former colleagues in the World Monetary Fund, $900 million were collected in Arafat's private box. In addition, his wife Suha Tawil, 34 years younger than him, received around 11 million euros in Paris. Her basic care of $100,000 a month seemed almost modest. The Palestinian ex-first lady lived in the Paris luxury hotel Bristol and went bargain hunting in Paris with the monthly amount of $100,000. Where's the money going? Ex-premier and successor of Yasser Arafat, Mahmoud Abbas, tried to find an answer in his review. As the crowning glory of his track record, Yasser Arafat was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1994.